All right, let's get down to it. You are Jennifer Walters, She-Hulk herself, mm -hmm. attorney at law. <laughs> wow! How the heck did that happen? <laughs> Great question. No idea. Jesus, what the hell, man? Still in control, no overwhelming feelings of rage. No, a normal amount of rage. I, I auditioned a couple years ago. I was very nervous to step into the MCU, but when I read the script was like totally in love with how funny and irreverent it was. Was the air horn really necessary? For comedy, absolutely. And how like just unexpected her journey was. How also like mundane so much of the stuff that she really focuses on is. I'm Jennifer Walters. I'm a lawyer. I have great friends. Can we get some shots, please? It's an emergency. And that to me, like that's the kind of stuff that I love to watch in films and love to, you know, read about as like slice of life things. Jen, do your thing. God, I really like this outfit. Could you tell us a bit about the unexpected practical things to consider when it comes to shooting a show like this? I'm gathering we're talking raised decks, mm -hmm. CGI suits. Was there a She-Hulk wig? For example, there were uh, there was a She-Hulk like bust that would come out on set every now and again, like, and it was truly just this, but it was a perfect rendition of her with a full wig, and she was on this stick, and they would come out and like turn her around in front of the camera, like to get I don't know what something about the shadows on her face, but it was super spooky because it would just like come out of nowhere at the end of every take <laughs> and kind of do its scene and then leave. Easy. Little punk. You know, there were platforms, there was a weird like ghost of She-Hulk that would be stuck to the top of my head, like just her kind of smiling face. Um, and then we had a wonderful stand-in, Malia, who is six foot seven, and she would come in and she would sit in the chair and sort of show me how, you know, a person who is six foot seven might sit in like a chair that uh, is is built for somebody who's five foot four. <laughs> So she was really cool about that and super open with helping me figure out the physicality. When you did get the gig and you knew it was yours, who was the first person you told and who reacted the most, I don't know, loudly? <laughs> That's a good question. It's true. I am a Hulk. I told my Oma. My Oma um, is German. Uh, she was German. She passed away this year, but she, she always called her Hulk. She would put like an umlaut, like it was like H O umlaut with an E and a K. And she would call her Hook. She was like, oh yeah, Hook. Like she didn't know who this character was. She just knew that I was going to be a green, you know, creature. And uh, it was fun to tell her and try to explain to her what this was. I will now refer to the show as She Hook. Yeah, <laughs> totally. She Hulk, attorney at law. That's got a nice ring to it. That name better not stick. So how much Hulk explaining did Mark do? Did he, I don't know, go, hey, here's the deal. Yeah. When you roar, you need to really use the abdomen. Yeah, yeah, he'd be like, listen, listen up, kid. Listen up, lady. <laughs> Cause we didn't ask for this, but you still got to deal with it. Your transformations are triggered by anger and fear. Those are like the baseline of any woman just existing. No, he's the absolute opposite of that. And he was so curious about my experience because he came in a couple months into us filming and we sort of traded war stories in terms of like what it feels like, you know, to be to be a Hulk and to be in those suits and to be kind of outside, sort of feel outside of like the cool superhero club. I.e. the one wearing pajamas. Exactly. The one wearing a helmet and pajamas and a, has a like camera in front of their face. You know, it's like not ne necessarily conducive to feeling like a cool guy. Um, so, so that was really fun and that actually informed for both of us how we came into this and the sort of loneliness of the character and very much so more for him because he has to also go off to an island to deal with his emotions, whereas I do not. Well, you know, having a private island cooked up for you by Tony Stark, I mean, there are good and there, bad sides. Sure, types, sure. I would like to have anger management issues if it resulted in that too. <laughs> <laughs> Our bodies metabolize alcohol at an incredibly fast rate, which means that we can drink so much 
and not get drunk. All buzz, no burn. That's good. I gather, or I imagine, that the fourth wall breaking was baked into the script from the very beginning. If you want to go back to life as a lawyer, I, I respect that. He doesn't mean that. I particularly love how your version of, of breaking the fourth wall allows you to stop driving the car. <laughs> You're not holding the wheel anymore. Yeah. You just go, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I need to have a chat. I just want to make sure that you don't think this is one of those cameo every week type of shows. I was like, what if I just take my hands off the wheel completely and, s and entirely destroy the reality of this scene? Well, except Bruce and Blonsky and Wong. <laughs> it totally broke me. I had to pause the show and went, Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> anyway. I love um, that. It does lead me to believe, as a massive geek, that we have to have a world where Deadpool and She-Hulk could share a scene because they'd never talk to each other. Yes, they would just truly be like trying to command oh. different cameras. Oh, hello. I know, right? And like... Whose perspective are we following then? That would be very <laughs> fun. Did you know that also, isn't Deadpool from Regina, Saskatchewan? He is a Canadian, yep. A uh, hush falls over the crowd as rookie sensation Wade W. Wilson out of Regina, Saskatchewan lines up the shot. But that's where I grew up. So here is a connection. This is how deep the MCU kind of cameo situation goes, right? Yep. This is Kevin Feige inceptioned me into my mother's body. He did not. <laughs> he imagine though, he could. He Don't, the power. <laughs> yeah. We need a scene of you and Ryan Reynolds in a Tim Hortons. Ordering double doubles and being annoyed with each other. <laughs> politely. Right, politely um, annoyed. There are loads of hidden jokes in this show, like loads. Uh -huh. And one I particularly like is, I think the Cheetos with chopsticks thing, is that a reference to Oscar Isaac? You tell me, is it? Because. This is a meme that I love, which is Oscar Isaac eating spicy Cheetos. What year is this? Uh, 2016, I believe, so hot and fresh. I mean, you'd have to ask Jessica Gao because that is such a specific, that's so specific. And she you know obviously, I mean? she must have come up with that or one of the writers in the room. But I'm, I guarantee, because the show's so meta, like I wouldn't be surprised if that was, yeah, an Easter egg. I hope this isn't a spoiler, but could you tell us what's on Jennifer Walters' lock screen? I'm not proud of this. It is a spoiler, in fact, but... <laughs> but and when I say but, I'm actually giving you a hint. <laughs> that is America's ass. <laughs> because one day I want you to meet Chris Evans right. and just lock eyes and go, I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for objectifying you, for reducing you to one part of your body. <laughs> sorry, dude. In the nicest possible way. Right. The Russo's did it first. It's all fine. That's right. Um, so it seems like he was pretty, pretty busy. All you're doing is repeating everything that I've already told you about my friend and colleague. Obviously, Captain America was a virgin. Look out! Questions I'm sure everyone's asking you. I'm sure people are saying, oh, what makes you angry, yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. But could you please share with me your diet and exercise secrets? Yeah, that's my favorite thing to talk about. And in fact, oh. I agree with that as a question and I agree with that as a cultural obsession too. And so I'm happy to discuss it and would love to give you the details <laughs> of, my di hours. of my yes, digestive please. system, <laughs> of like my movements. Here's the hot scoop. Yeah. Moving on. Girl, your ass looks crazy right now. Finally, can you tell us about the final fight where it's you, Saul Goodman, Perry Mason, Ali McBeal, the Lincoln <laughs> Lawyer, and Atticus Finch beating seven bells out of each other, please. Do you know I was in Perry Mason? Blessed be the attorneys who will prosecute the devil. Yep, and that's what really pleased me about it. <laughs> but that's where it goes, again, super meta. I did that show so that I was in a lawyer show, so when I came to be a lawyer in She-Hulk, we already had a 1930s courtroom scene that you could cut to me and just make me green in it. Perfect. Right. Let me leave you with this. Who on set, from Ginger to Jamila to Mark, who was the worst at cracking up on camera? This is a 30 minute comedy show. There have to be moments where people break. You know what? Everyone was so professional. 
We like laughed a lot off camera. There was a lot of dancing that happened on camera that was like unprompted. I think that was our version of laughing. Because we didn't really laugh. We were dead serious. There's no mucking about. This isn't no. about a six foot seven green lawyer or anything. No, Come this on, is absolutely brain surgery. <laughs> <laughs> Wearing an I Love Mexico t-shirt. That's right. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. A real pleasure. Thank you so uh, much. The show is so much fun. And so are you. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Can't wait to see Saul Goodman get his teeth knocked out. Oh my God, I can't wait to do it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to keep up to date. You can listen to my Radio 1 movies and TV podcast, Screen Time, on BBC Sounds. And you can find these interviews in full on BBC iPlayer by searching Movies with Ali Plum. <laughs>